Hey everyone, hooray, more of Sleepy Reader's Shaky Cam. I, um, I've read completely through the Marvel Age of Comics. There's not a lot of um, text in here, really. Uh, three short chapters by Roy Thomas about the three ages um, between 61 and 78. <clears throat> but I thought before I return this to the library, I'd just show you a few things that caught my attention in one way or another in this book. Um, apologies for the shaky cam. So let's see. Well, let me also say just reading this strengthened my feeling that Stan Lee was a really good editor. We can argue about his writing or whatever. And when he was still a hands-on publisher, I think he was a really good publisher. Later, he was further up the line and less involved in the creative choices. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. Let's see, the first thing I, oh, it's harder to get to the little stickies than I thought. So one thing is that, you know, so many of the images in here were super familiar to me. I'm so drenched in the lore of Marvel from the 60s and 70s. But anyway, things still struck me. And one thing that struck me is this is just a really awesome um, splash page. I just love it. And it's not one that I've spent a lot of time looking at before. So what is next? I love these cutaways of superhero hideouts. They should still do that, even though we're all grown-ups now. It's just so much fun. Um, and maybe the modern ones could have even more detail. Okay, here, I love Sandman. <laughs> He's so silly, but eventually they kind of made him into the, the most, one of the most powerful <coughs> villains for a while. Me and my daughter... I once read her a Fantastic Four where the Sandman was nearly unstoppable and we keep joking about, ooh, he's so powerful, he can turn into sand. Um, of course, here Spider-Man uh, deals with him quite easily with a vacuum cleaner, which I love. <clears throat> Sorry, I seem to have a bit of asthma tonight. So I'm kind of coughing. Looking at this cover, I thought, wow, I really should read some more Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. Such an awesome cover. Mission Capture Hitler. Wouldn't that be cool? Can I skip something here? No. Um, oh, my thought here was, boy, I wish they had continued the Mary Marvel Marching Society. Why did they have to stop that? The MMMS wants you. Why did they have to switch to Foom? I was a card-carrying member of Foom, but I was too young to join the Mary Marvel Marching Society, which just sounds so much sillier and more fun. Maybe it, maybe, uh, maybe if I was more rational, Foom would sound better. Um, maybe it was just, you know, everything that came a few years before I became a comic book fan seemed cooler to me. Another one where I thought, wow, this is a really amazing splash page. I think it's from, like, FF37, maybe? Um, just glancing at the notes here. What have we got here? Oh. Looking at this picture of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby made me think, combined with some other books I've been reading lately, you know, everyone was eager to hire really young people, but it was middle-aged men who brought on the Silver Age of comics. And it was the really young people they hired who brought us the Bronze Age of comics. Um, there's something to be said for experience, ex uh, talent that's been developed for a couple decades and then unleashed. And, uh, yeah, so it's kind of too bad that they became, they, they thought the success of Marvel Comics was all about youth and it. There's even a comment somewhere in here that uh, Roy Thomas, at age like 27, was the oldest person on the staff once Stanley left. Maybe I just say that because I'm so old. 
I never get tired of you've hit the jackpot, tiger. Or face it, tiger, you've hit the jackpot. I never get tired of it, and I don't even quote it correctly. <clears throat> Here's another incredible splash page that just jumped out at me. I've definitely seen this one many times before, but it just re-reminded me of how great it was. Okay, this was really cool. I love, you know, because I've seen the art over and over so many times, I love to see the process. You don't see that much process pages from the gold, or the Silver Age, sorry. The Silver Age, which, let's face it, really was the Golden Age, actually the best age of comics, or of American superhero comics. So here is a Steve Ditko penciled page. He penciled extremely loosely, and then Stan Lee did his magic putting in the captions, and apparently at this period anyway, he wrote in by hand, and then the letter got to go back over it. But look how loose and sketchy what Ditko did was, and then afterwards he put in all the detail and uh, gave it, you know, all the rest of the style that it had. <clears throat> oh, a bunch here. The reason why I have asthma today is I played in the finale of my daughter's soccer team's big adventure, which was um, a game with the parents against the children. And uh, I am so out of shape. An hour of running back and forth on the um, <clears throat> soccer field really triggered my asthma. So this reminded me, I, Modoc is just an amazing creation. And uh, so wacky looking. And I think, I assume it was originally, the visuals was originally created by Jack Kirby, but I could be wrong. And the other thing I didn't know, it says somewhere here. Somewhere. Oh, there it is. Um, MODOK, I didn't know, stands for Mental Organism Designed Only for Killing. You can't get a better name than that, right? <clears throat> oh, I love... I didn't... I, this is one thing I never knew about before. These were stickers that came in packs of gum and had kind of jokes on the Marvel superheroes. Turn that air conditioner off, says Thor. Spider-Man says, But mother, I'm too old for dancing lessons. <laughs> Which hand has the chocolate, says the Hulk. Butterfinger, says the Human Torch. Clyde, how you've changed. I must get that roof fixed, says the Human Torch. Hey, lady, you dropped your package. So silly that I love it. Here's an interesting strip, which is a story conference. I, a spoof of a story conference between Stan Lee and Gene Cullen, who apparently brought a tape recorder to his story conferences with Stan Lee. I wonder if any of those tapes still exist. I mean, that would be amazing to hear those. Um, also in here are a lot of jokes about how Stan Lee really didn't come up with the plots and tried to avoid actually t giving any plots during these plot meetings. And I assume that was just a joke, but sometimes jokes reflect a little bit of reality. I don't know. Uh, he did, after all, bring a tape recorder, so he was uh, expecting to hear some actual plot. Okay, and speaking of Gene Colan, again, and speaking of process, Colan is famous for his amazing pencils, um, which inevitably were ruined by inkers because of the shades of gray. And this, I wish there were more examples of his Silver Age penciling. Maybe there are somewhere. This is brilliant, and look how well he drew that hand. I think a lot of, not only the shades of gray, but just the subtleties of his lines are lost once they're inked. Um, so I'd love a coffee table book just of Colin's inks. I know late in his career at DC, they published some books based just on his inks, but it would be so great to see some of his superhero work and his Silver Age work this way. I just thought this looks so cool. I guess it's a printing plate. 
I wonder if any of those are still available to collectors. Um, I just love that negative image for some reason. Oh, here's a great process thing. This apparently is what John Romita Jr., not John Romita Jr., John Romita Sr. did. First he did a color sketch of a cover before he drew it, and I don't know if he did the inking and the coloring. I think he didn't at least do the coloring, but he had the colors kind of figured out beforehand along with the whole sketch. And I really like sort of learning how he may have thought about color a lot when he was designing covers. He and Mary Severin, I believe, were the main cover designers at, in the early days of Marvel. Okay, uh, this is a really cool picture. The credit on the next page says it's by um, Jack Kirby. It's for a blacklight poster. I'm almost 100% positive this is a John Buscema drawing. So that's the only error I caught them in in this book, not that I was searching for errors at all. Okay, here is Barry Windsor Smith standing next to Wendy Pinney. Um, it was a picture taken by her husband, uh, Richard Pinney. But Barry Smith looks pretty much exactly like I would expect the 60s or early 70s Barry Smith to look like, uh, just based on his drawing style and stuff. Wendy Pinney looks nothing like I would expect, based on her drawing style, what she would look like. And I've seen pictures before, but it just jumped out at me here. Um, <clears throat> so what else? We're getting near the end here. Oh, I saw this picture and I thought, everything looks good when it's by Wally Wood. Everything pops. Actually, there was another cover in here somewhere that I missed. Dang it. This, this system of the little stickies isn't the best. And finally, here is a way that a lot of comics were de delivered to my house on Rural Route 95 in Connecticut. Not Rural No, I don't know what the... The 95 was the number of our mailbox, but we used to be on a rural route, and that had a number, but I can't remember it anymore because my parents' address isn't done that way anymore. But this is what... Marvel Comics folded over and put in a brown paper envelope of sorts, kind of a wrapper more than an envelope, how they arrived in your mailbox as a kid. And this was when I learned that I could um, ask relatives for subscriptions at Christmas and birthdays. That's when I started getting a lot of comics because my parents would limit me when I was at the drugstore and how many I could grab at one time. Um, so anyway, uh, and I didn't have endless amounts of money. <laughs> I think subscriptions were like $3 for 12 months or something. So this brings back a lot of memories and, uh, they often arrived wet. So there wasn't much protection for it, but I still thrilled every, anytime I saw one of these in my mailbox, I knew that day was going to be a good day. So... That's it for this book. I mean, there's tons of interesting things in here. I just wanted to give you some perhaps slight oddities of what popped into my head. Um, I don't know, you know, maybe some, I have so many books I want to buy. Maybe someday I would buy this book. It's a very nice coffee table book. But like I say, it's so full of familiar stuff to me that I may go elsewhere first or buy other books first. If it doesn't go out of print though, that's, that's an issue too. Okay, uh, so I was sure, yet again, it's a funny process. Every night I think, okay, I'm too tired. I'm not going to make one of these uh, daily sleepy videos after all. But yet again, I managed to do it. And um, maybe I'll do a better one tomorrow night. Good night.